All right, you're going to need a strip of paper. We're going to use that for our feel gauge. A ruler, a metric. Patience, definitely patience. Attention to detail, and a calculator. Now I will show you how to download my visual calculator from GitHub and how to use it in OpenSCAD to calculate some key measurements for your printer. This can be helpful in designing your printer to see what design decisions will look like and how well the choices interact. You will need to download and install OpenSCAD to use this tool. OpenSCAD is available at OpenSCAD.org. There is also an Excel spreadsheet with the same calculations in the same GitHub folder, just no visual model. Open a browser to HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash GitHub dot com forward slash J A Y D M digital forward slash MK underscore visual underscore calc. Click the download zip button in the lower right, open the zip, and copy the folder to your hard drive. Open the folder and then double click the Castle underscore 300.scad file. When the program opens, you should see the SCAD code editor on the left, a blank viewport on the right, and below the viewport, a console window. Go to the Design menu and make sure Automatic Reload and Compile is checked. Any changes you make will automatically update the model in the viewport. Click and drag in the viewport to rotate the model. Use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Right click and drag to pan the model. A combination of these can reposition the model and allow you to zoom in on any particular feature. The visual calculator uses several STL files in the same directory to draw the printer model. The extrusions and rails can be visualized up to 1000 millimeters in length. Before I started recording, I changed the top frame offset from 25 to 15. As you can see, the tool is still a work in progress, but the calculations are sound. Watch what happens when I change 15 back to 25. You may need to scroll up in the console to see the calculated variables. These are recalculated each time you make a change to the file. Right now, the radius is 112.6 millimeters and the diagonal rod is 220 based on the current inputs. Watch what happens when I change the minimum angle from 21.1 degrees to 20 degrees. The delta radius remained at 112.6 millimeters while the diagonal rod changed to 218.4 millimeters. This is because the diagonal rod length is calculated based on the minimum angle. Delta radius is based on the horizontal extrusion length. You use the calculator 
by changing the variables in the editor pane. They are located at the top of the file. The ones you will most likely want to change are frame underscore extrusion underscore L. This is typically 240 millimeters for the mini console. Increasing this will increase the delta radius, also called the horizontal radius and repetier, as well as your build surface diameter. The delta rod length is calculated from the build surface radius and the minimum angle, so it too is affected by the horizontal extrusion length. The longer your diagonal rods, the more vertical space they require, and the lower your bill height. Frame extrusion underscore H. Typically 600 millimeters, higher values may be less stable and require bracing. Delta min angle. This is the minimum angle that you want your delta rods at when the tip of your nozzle is at the edge of your printing surface. It is recommended you not go below 20 degrees. The other two are used for drawing the model and are not critical for the calculations. Ultimately, what we need are the delta radius, delta diagonal rod length, and the build plate radius for calibrations. I wanted to show the relationship that delta radius has with the diagonal rod length. What is important to know is that all dimensions are calculated or measured from the centers of the pivots. Delta radius is dependent on the distance of the tower from the center and then the rail or guide that the carriage and ultimately the pivot connect to. If you do not change the delta radius, but you increase the minimum angle, your delta rod length will become longer, and so will the vertical length from the pivot to pivot, meaning less bill height. I want to review the orientation of a delta printer. As you saw, the X tower is in the front left, Y tower is in the front right, and the Z tower is in the center rear. Not to be confused with the tower names, the X axis runs horizontally and the Y axis runs front to back. The center of your build area is the origin and is at coordinate X0, Y0. If you move towards the left of the printer, that is the minus X direction. If you move towards the right, that's the plus x direction. Moving to the front of the printer is the minus y direction, and to the rear is the plus y. z equals zero, or simply z zero, is as low as you can go and will be when the nozzle is just touching the build surface. z max is the distance measured from the nozzle to the build surface when the printer is homed to the top. If you followed along with my first test video, then the last step was to home your printer. Use a metric ruler to measure the distance from the tip of your nozzle to the build surface while homed. This is your Z-Max length. Better to underestimate this distance than overestimate since we'll need some room to adjust the end stop offsets. You will want to use a calculator to get your steps per millimeter. Repetier Host has one built in under Tools.
There are a lot of settings we can change in the EEPROM dialog. This is why I prefer to use Repetier firmware over Marlin, especially for calibration. Changes to the EEPROM are not saved until you click OK at the bottom of the dialog. I prefer to control the maximum feed rate in my slicer settings and not have the printer limit them. Most would agree that 200 millimeters per second is the maximum the Arduino can do on a delta anyway. A homing speed of 80 to 100 is reasonable. Anything higher does not allow enough time to decelerate when an end stop is triggered. Jerk is the rate of change of acceleration. Think of it as the limit on how fast you can go from 0 to 60 without shaking your machine apart. Honestly, I'm not sure why home is at Z0, since delta is home to the top or maximum end stops. My best guess is that this is the convention used in Cartesian printers, and so it was adopted by the Repetier programmer. Accelerations of 1,000 are fine during calibration. You may want to increase them to 5,000 afterwards. It is very important that you enter the exact diagonal rod length. This controls the accuracy for the X and Y dimensions of your prints. Too small, and your prints will be oversized. Too big, and they will be undersized. Delta firmware breaks up each move into smaller segments. These settings control how many subsegments each type of move is broken into. A smaller number of segments means less computational overhead and also less accuracy. A higher number of segments requires more computations and thus can limit your overall feed rates. These values are fine for calibration and you can change them later after you start printing and learning more about the limits of your printer. We will be adjusting the tower end stop offsets during calibration, so we'll need to initialize them to zero. If you use the Repetier configuration tool on the Repetier website, your delta angles should be loaded. Angles are counterclockwise, starting from the plus x axis. Z tower is at 90, x is at 210, and y is at 330. We will not be adjusting the alpha angles during calibration. In my experience, they are not needed for a mini castle with its joined vertices. We will not be covering extruder calibration in this video. Our primary focus is on calibrating the delta movement. Remember, to save your settings, you must press the OK button at the bottom of the EEPROM dialog.
We will use three test points in front of each of the towers so we can calibrate the in-stop offset for that tower. The formula to convert polar coordinates, meaning a radius and an angle, into Cartesian coordinates, meaning x and y, is x coordinate equals the cosine of the angle times the radius, and y coordinate equals the sine of the angle times the radius. You will want to calculate the x and y coordinates for each tower test point and write them down. You may want to use a radius value that is 5 to 10 millimeters less than your actual build surface radius. This is in case you have a hot end fan or something else that would interfere with the tower belts like I did. We start at 10 millimeters above the surface and use the minus Z one millimeter button to step down in one millimeter increments. Ideally, we want the nozzle to be above the build surface when we reach Z zero. This means we have room to add X tower in stop offset. If, on the other hand, the nozzle had reached the surface before Z equals zero or was within one millimeter, you would reduce the Z max value by one or two millimeters to give room to add in stop offset. After any change to the EEPROM values, you need to click OK to save them. Next, rehome your printer and retest until you are above the build surface when Z equals zero. In order to have the nozzle touch the surface at Z zero, we need to add offset to the X tower in stop offset in the EEPROM dialog. The Repetier programmer decided that the user could do the calculation to convert millimeters to steps so have your calculator handy. I like to add more offset distance than is required so I can get 0.1 millimeter accuracy. If we were three millimeters away, I would add four or five millimeters to the offset. For my printer, I would multiply the distance, which is 5 millimeters, times the steps per millimeter, which is 160 for me, and enter 800 in the X tower end stop offset EEPROM setting. Remember to click OK to save and always rehome after you change a value. As a precaution, use a Z value of 5 or 10 in your G code commands until you know where your nozzle will be in relation to the build surface. As you retest, you should end up reaching the surface before z equals zero. Whatever value is shown on the z-axis readout multiplied by your steps per millimeter is what you will subtract from your in-stop offset. Okay, so we should be at 10 millimeters. Let's step down. Seven, 
eight. Getting close. I'm gonna, I'm gonna micro step here. Okay, so it's saying I'm at 1.9. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And since we're getting so close, I'm gonna go ahead and use my piece of paper here. And I'm just wiggling as I step down. Okay, so right now, look, you see that? I've got some nice friction. So for me, I like that. And according to the uh, readout right now, Z is at 0 0.9 millimeters. All right. So I need to subtract. So let me okay it. Bring it home it. And we'll go back down to one. Alright. So yeah, definitely at one now. So yeah, you, you have to after you change the setting, you have to hit OK in the EE prompt to uh, close the window to update the setting. So I'm gonna step in. I'm doing point one steps. It says I'm at point three, two, one. And zero. Yep, that's good. Okay, so let me raise this puppy up. We'll go to 10, and now we need to go to Y. And so Y is in the exact same position as uh, the X tower, except it's on the positive X side. So all I have to do is use the up arrow, change the minus 65 to plus 65, leave the minus 40, because we're still in the uh, negative Y quadrant. Okay. And I'm going to have to reposition this camera here so you can see. And I'm going to bring it down a little bit. There. All right. So you can see we should be at uh, five millimeters, or excuse me, one millimeter. And it looks like we are much higher than one millimeter. Um, so let's just step down and see one. Okay. Yeah. You see that? So, we're definitely going to need to add some to Y. I'm going to add, uh, let's add two millimeters. So, two times. Okay, so we're at one millimeter, and I'm going to step into it nice and gentle. Okay, it's saying that is zero. And you know what? I'm happy with that. That's that's a nice uh, a nice friction. So let's move up by ten. Now we're going to go to Z. Now, the thing with Z is, um, it is on the Y axis, so send it over here, and you know what? <laughs> My printer can go that far. Things you'll, uh, you'll experience on your side, so let me see, am I on? Nope, still not on. Apparently I need a bigger piece of glass. So we'll go to 65, how's that? Definitely above two millimeters. All right, that is zero right there, and that you can see, I've got a pretty good distance there. So I am gonna add three. Is three gonna be enough? Yeah, three should be enough. And I would okay. save it. Moment. Send it back. Okay, so we should be at two millimeters. 
looks like, yeah, it might be. Let's see. So we'll step down by one, and then let's step into it. Point one. So we're at point nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Then it's zero there, and it's just not. It's just starting to grab. So I know I need to add. You know, what? I'm gonna add another note. See, now we're much closer. All right, here we go. 0.987. Oh, I can feel it starting to touch. Oops, 0 0.6. I'm sorry. 0.8. 7. 6. 5. And 5. 5 is good. All right, so I need to subtract 0.5. Same spot. And a zero. And yeah, we're good. Okay, so let's. If you change any offset after setting another one, you should go back and retest the others to make sure nothing changed. The three towers of a delta are not independent. That's looking, I'm happy with that. Let's uh, just step into it. That's 0.9. Sorry, I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way here. It's 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, uh, two, 2 is going to be much better there, so I need to subtract point. Okay, okay. All right, so again, we're at one millimeter. Let's step into it. Eight. It's nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Yep, that's how. <laughs> with that. No big change there. And we got one more to check. This is our Z. Alright. So let's step down by a millimeter. Okay, we still got room. Alright, that's that's at zero, but look, eh, it's a little low. We need to, we need to add some to that. Let's add, uh, oh, let's add in the back. All right, so, we're one. We're nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. One is where I want to be, I think. So I need to subtract one off of there. Config.
same thing. We'll check my height. Now what's going to control the height on this one is our overall height. Okay? So let's, right now we're at 10, so we'll step into it. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Ooh, that is not 3. You see that? Okay, so what is that telling us? Step down into it and just see how much we're off. So it says right now I'm at 3 millimeters, which I'm not. So let me step into it. Okay, that's 2.7. Right, look at that. So, so we're off by 2.5 millimeters in the center. Okay? So, we have to go in, we have to change the uh, horizontal distance, um, in this case we need to reduce it, so I'm actually going to be a little aggressive with this reduction until we kind of figure out our bearings here. So.